It's now my pleasure to invite to call on Mr. Neil Parekh for your maiden speech in this parliament. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for allowing me to join this debate on the amendments to the Income Tax Act to bring into effect several announcements made in DPM's budget speech earlier this year. I would like to discuss a few specific amendments that are related to business. Let me discuss first the Enterprise Innovation Scheme, or the EIS. To nurture and encourage innovation, Budget 2023 introduced the EIS that enhances the tax deductions for five very important activities in the innovation value chain. These five activities are R&D uh, conducted in Singapore, registration of IP including patents, trademarks and design, acquisition and licensing of IP rights, training via courses approved by SkillsFuture Singapore, and lastly, innovation carried out with polytechnics and institutes of technical education. In my view, the EIS scheme is poised to be a game changer for our economy, as these deductions are very good for businesses, especially SMEs, and important for workers who aspire to excel, improve themselves, and keep themselves abreast with the need for improved skills in an ever-changing global environment. The introduction of the EIS is a holistic approach to anchor high value creation activities in Singapore by providing companies with added incentives to undertake R&D activities in Singapore, acquire IP rights and upskill and transform the workforce. Now I'd like to touch on the deductions available for expenses related to electronic com commerce. These deductions are designed to foster the growth of businesses that operate in the dis digital sphere, which is increasingly becoming the mainstay of trade and commerce. Businesses can now deduct startup expenses related to business advisory, account creation, content creation, product listing, and placement. The next area I'd like to discuss is maintaining overseas offices and the, um, and the uh, deductions that are available for that. As our economy becomes increasingly interconnected globally, maintaining overseas trade offices is crucial for businesses to expand their original reach, their international reach, I beg your pardon. As we adapt to the digital age and the ever-expanding global marketplace, we recognize the need to support businesses that operate internationally and engage in electronic commerce. The deduction for expenses related to overseas trade offices will encourage businesses to establish and sustain these offices, fostering trade relationships and enhancing our country's global presence. In a rapid, rapidly evolving global landscape, innovation is a key to success for businesses and nations. Economic progress enhances competitiveness and improves our standard of living. Introducing this new tax deduction for qualifying expenditure incurred in pursuing innovation projects is a visionary good policy that aligns with our nation's commitment to innovation and economic growth. Lastly, there are provisions for SMEs or companies that do not generate sufficient profits to benefit from tax deductions to opt for cash conversion instead. More SMEs should tap on the EIS for innovation, IP, and training expenses in order to access digital and green economy opportunities. Let me now turn to several other tax changes which are before this house. These changes have the potential to significantly impact some corporates, fund management companies, family offices operating in Singapore. I'm referring to the introduction of Section 10L, the taxation of gains from the sale of foreign assets received in Singapore by businesses without economic substance in our country. Well, the world is changing and we in Singapore have to change with it. The spirit of this change is to align our tax practices with the EU Code of Conduct Group Guidance, which aims to mitigate international tax avoidance risks. Other jurisdictions, such as Hong Kong, are implementing similar rules to avoid being on COCG's blacklist. Previously, the cornerstone of Singapore's tax system was it does not tax capital gains. This change, however, introduces capital gains tax into the Singapore system and perhaps represents a fundamental change to our tax system. A potential sum of uh, impact of this change is that some corporates, fund management companies, and family offices may consider relocating their holding companies to other global jurisdictions such as Dubai or the UK, 
resulting in a loss of opportunities and jobs within Singapore. However, one very positive outcome of this tax bill could be that these entities may instead choose to increase their economic substance in Singapore by expanding their operations and businesses so that they are exempt from this new tax. Needless to say, such increased business activity can only help our economy. In the larger scheme of things, the government needs to continue to reiterate its pro-investment, pro-business stance by clearly communicating the rationale for the shift and its continued commitment to providing a stable and trusted regime for both individuals and companies with investment and holding structures. The second area is on submitting income information for self-employed persons. This initiative aims to streamline income tax assessment for SAPs and facilitate the administration of schemes such as workforce income supplement. In this regard, I have a following suggestions to make which perhaps the government can explore in the implementation of this initiative. Would the Income Tax Department consider exploring the possibility of combining this rollout with the upcoming changes with regards SEPs serving as platform workers and who may require a structured and standardized way to achieve financial inclusion? Can the platforms enabling employment for SEPs be classified as intermediaries and be provided with financial support to establish this new infrastructure for regulatory reporting? A word about creating awareness. We have often heard from our SMEs in a variety of sectors that it is quite a challenge for them to keep pace and track the changes made to the tax system after each budget. I would encourage the Ministry of Finance to have regular roadshows post-budget as well as distribute focused short information brochures through various digital channels throughout the financial year. Such consistent focused messages are very useful for our smaller businesses to easily comprehend and then take necessary action to make sure that they do not lose out on the benefits that they could accrue and gain from the changes. Sir, I stand in support of the bill.